Caleb, why do you look so confused? Caleb, he doesn't know what rap means. He doesn't uh, know what rap means. I mean, like, I'm so... I'm so out of the loop here, yes? Yeah? Young Thundercats. The fuck? You're supposed to be on all those things already. You should have heard that already. It's L-I-T. It is. Fam. I, I don't listen to hip-hop. <laughs> I, uh, I really don't though. Is that, is that from the is that the South Park movie quote? South Park, uh, yeah. South Park movie, yeah. Anyone ever told you about the Emancipation Proclamation? I don't listen to hip hop. <laughs> <laughs> Probably one of the best line of the movie, honestly. Oh, Hell yeah, God. dude. Hit my music. Sierra Hotel, India, Echo, Lima, Delta, Shield. You are now listening to the SMC Wrestling Podcast with your boys, the smart, Caleb Baldwin, the mark, Carl Irvin, and the contrarian, Rance Morris. Believe in the pod. Hello and welcome to the, let's say, November 26th edition of the SMC Wrestling Podcast. I am one third of this lovely trio, if I do say so myself. I am Caleb Baldwin, joined as always by two fellow uh, wrestling fans. One, it goes by the name of Carl Irvin, I believe. Carl, what's up, man? Hey, what's going on, Caleb? Um, So just full disclosure for everybody listening to this, we've been talking shit for about an hour and a half now without recording or... No, yeah, no, no, no. Well, we've been well recording. it's recorded. Yeah. We've been talking a bunch, so um, we're all a little sleepy, but I think it's still going to be pretty awesome because I've been drinking and Rance is sleepy, and Caleb is extra hyper tonight. Caleb's so, Caleb. I got my this, fucking Mountain Dew right here, brother. I yeah, know that so makes me sound like a redneck or whatever, but still. Yeah, it is, yeah. but you are. Let's say, so yeah. I'm just going to pass it along here and let's get going because I know we got... Rance! Rance, after Carl took a, an extra amount of time for no real reason. Rance, how the hell are you? Hey, man, it's all good, brother. Uh, Thanksgiving was good. Uh, little holiday. Ate some food, had some food, babies. Ready to talk some wrestling. That's Actually, um, before we go too far, first off, Thanksgiving is trash, says the retail worker. And... Um, you know, there's something I need to get off my chest oh, for about God. 60 seconds. You know, there's there's a guy who gets a lot of shit. <sighs> I'm not going to talk about him much. Um, I just need to get something off my chest. Um, get my stopwatch ready here so I don't go over. Are you really about um, to time this? Just go, man. I'm not going to fucking go over. That's not part of the deal. You're never getting over, that's for sure. Go I, I'm already over, brother. Okay, so there's a guy by the name of Jinder Mahal. And first, I got to say, a couple weeks ago, he had a match with AJ Styles. The match was really good. I'm not going to lie. Um, his entrance is pretty cool. He, he looks fly in a suit. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, what else, man? Uh, his his putties, they're, they're pretty awesome. I love the sing bros. I love how they bump, too, man. Yeah. Um, that being said... Um, he sure does know how to put on a uh, a fucking what's that thing called? Is that like a claw on the shoulder? It's lovely. I gotta say that too. Um, God damn it, I can't stall. <laughs> no, you're doing a terrible job. You, you I did. am doing a terrible job. But that being said, you know what? Jinder Mahal is not all that bad. He's yeah. not all that bad. You know. I love People it. just love to you know give him trouble. You know, but. You know, at times I'm like, eh, you know, maybe we should go a little easy on him. Yeah, I've been um, saying it forever. Yeah. But, uh, guys, now that that minute of misery is over, uh, I had to say that, just so you know. I, I wish there, y'all there knew might, why he had to say that. It is there, hilarious. There yeah. might have been some, there might have been some things that I said earlier that were being leveraged over me, possibly. I don't know. Um, but, yeah. So... First things first, guys. Let's let's get into the brass tacks. Let's get into the meat and potatoes of this fucking podcast. I, wait, wait, wait. I, th- so, I want to hear you talk about Jennifer Hall some more. Okay, yes. you do? Okay. Um. Well, the minute's up, but oh, okay, I'll still lay on a... Never mind. Never mind. Move on. Uh, <laughs> We're on to the next topic. 
I heard his finish at uh, Starcade was pretty good. I didn't see it because they're like, let's not put that on the network. But oh well, whatever. You know, yeah, nothing really big that, happened there. Screw the people. Screw but, the people of Charlotte for getting a nice show for once. But dude, all I'm saying is, I would have loved to have seen Double A do that Spinebuster on the network. That would have been pretty cool. It's but all Twitter works too. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Because who doesn't love Double A and fucking Kirk Hernandez and Bam Bam Bigelow. Basically, like if you wrestled in the 80s and 90s, you had some alliteration going on. I probably liked what you had to do on rewatches, you know. But why so the fuck am I talking about does, that? I'm just that include, I'm just rattling off shit right now. Yeah, you're being an idiot. Go ahead. yeah that, that's that's. Uh, no, because he was mid 90s. But that being said, <laughs> again. To the the meat and potatoes of this podcast. So on Monday, we had the return of Paige, but she did not come alone, fellas. That's right. She had tough enough alum Daria, a.k.a. Sonia Deville, and Mandy Rose, a.k.a. Amanda. And they ran roughshod over the women on Monday, and... We can talk about that after I announce or t- tell you the other thing that happened that you already know about, but whatever. On Tuesday, something very similar happened <laughs> yeah. when uh, Naomi was getting makeup done and a uh, a female who had very something some kind of a similar resemblance to uh, to Paige named uh, Ruby Riot, indie name Heidi Lovelace. She's really solid, so awesome. Um, Attacked Naomi along with Sarah Logan, and fuck, that's not a good sign. I'm already forgetting the other one's name. Liv Morgan. <laughs> Liv Morgan, and former uh, girlfriend of Enzo Amore. Current girlfriend of Tyler Bate, there you former go. UK champion. Love you, um, so <laughs> he put in you know, work, son. Yeah. Uh, oh, and they beat up Charlotte and Natty, too. So they, yeah. they got over on everyone. Um, you know what the funniest thing is? It's that meme people put on Twitter, you know, because that's what people do. Uh, SmackDown asking to copy Raw's homework, and Raw said, you know, don't make it obvious. <laughs> and then on the top. That was got, good, yeah. Yes, to the left. Very solid. You got, you got your brunette. In the middle, you got your goth. To the right. You got your blonde. Come on, guys. Get it together. You know? Yeah. Are, are you guys just like, what's the de- Like, were you like, was there a bet going on between like the creative teams? Like, hey, I bet we can do the same shit you do and no one call us out. But, well, <laughs> well, I, I want to hear rants first on this. Well, yeah. I, I, yeah. I kind of have a theory and it's going to be completely off base. And really, I'm just trying to keep everybody interested. So I want to <laughs> hear what Rance has to say first. So I know he had some criticisms, especially of night number two. Yes. So um, well, go ahead. First, I want to make sure people don't – this criticizes all you want because it's worth criticism, but don't criticize Monday because at least Paige, Sonya Deville, and Mandy Rose coming together, there's a reason for that, right? Um, she was the judge and tough enough. She yeah. was extremely tough on Amanda, right? And uh, Daria kind of was one of the true success stories of the show. She came out on television and she did well. Um, she left MMA to pursue wrestling, like, you know. But a little backstory, when Paige has been training, those were the two that she was training with to get back. So it will make sense for her to bring them to make a statement. So let's get back. Let's get to this atrocity we call SmackDown Live, right? Um, Ruby Riot. SmackDown Live might be an atrocity, but okay, go ahead. I'm not talking about the show. I'm talking about this the the ankle. Okay. So Ruby Riot is an amazing character. Is amazing wrestler. She's an okay character. Sarah Logan can really wrestle. She just hadn't shown anything yet. And Liv Morgan is cute, right? If you really wanted to run an angle with three NXT women taking over, right, or just coming to make their mark, why would you do it with three career babyfaces? More than that, 
why if you and Sarah Logan, by the way, who's she's been signed for about a year. But if you were going to use a chick who hadn't even really been on TV, why don't you use somebody who's actually heel? Like, everybody's saying the Peyton and, and Billy should have been called up, which I agree. But all the women you guys sitting there chilling, Mercedes Martinez? Yeah. Right? You know, just just sitting there, right? Uh, you wanted to call somebody somebody um, green like Liv is, Bianca Belair? Right? right, you got people just sitting there, bro. In fact, I'd argue you should have let uh, Peyton or the Kyrie win the match on Sunday or Saturday and call up Ember. It's just, it's just, I don't have a problem with them wanting to call up. I don't even really have a problem with the angles being the same because I feel like there's something. There's got to be something else up with this, right? There's got to be some more. There better there. be. That, that's where I'm going when we right. when we talk when it comes to me. Go ahead. Sure, but. I, your choice, and 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 then when you have when you have, because this is clearly a heel angle. When you have a heel angle with a group coming in, like let me use the shield for example. When the shield came in, not only uh, were they vicious, but they had their offense was vicious, right? Ambrose is a greater. Ambrose would rub his his forearm in your face and and Seth was a high flyer but he'd do it from a, a, a malicious way and Roman's just a powerhouse right? Sure. I don't think Liv Morgan, Sarah Logan and Ruby Riot do anything possibly even slightly vicious. In fact, right. the only move yeah. I've ever seen Liv Morgan do and I, I watch all the shows before Tuesday was the little Fake Trish Stratus Matrix and the guillotine. I don't know. Well, I will say does. this real quick, kind of to your to your point. I don't know that they're going off of a move set for Heeldom, okay? Because Sarah Logan doesn't really look like a heel at all, anyway, to me. Like, but if you look at Ruby and you look at Liv, and it's very stereotypical and shitty, but think of it from a WWE perspective. Mm-hmm. Ruby Riot's all tatted up and goth looking. She just she kind of, and even though we know her, you know, if you know her outside of WWE. Tidy Lovelace or whatever, and you kind of know her as this face character. She kind of looks like she would be a good heel, she you know, just be, in that sure. stereotypical way because she's tatted up. And Liv is the same way because she's like this ridiculously hot, you know, blonde chick. Super, she just kind of gives off that vibe of like, I'm the real good looking, I'm better she, than you, yeah, like completely that. unattainable, that sort of thing. But the problem, even if that's Liv, not where they're going with it, that's kind of like sure. But you the know, problem with Liv is her gimmick is Carmella's. They're the right. same person. So it will work if you put Liv on Raw and then Liv be the scrappy baby face from New York who loves black culture just a little too much, but it's cute. Right. But now you got her doing the same hill things that Carmella worked her ass off to change and to perfect. Because we haven't given Carmella enough credit for completely remaking herself from being Enzo and Cass's lackey to now being a fully fleshed, you know what I'm saying, uh, character. We got to give her some credit for that. Right. Because she could have easily, you know, rested on her laurels and, and everything. But Liv is the same person. It's like that uh, It's like that Spider-Man meme where they're pointing at each other. Look at the same yeah. Know? Absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's um, just, I just, they didn't botch the whole thing. There's, there's a point behind it, but they botched the people they called up. I think sure. they should have called up different people. I, I I would have to agree on the fact that, you know, I would have preferred they called up uh, Peyton and Billy as well. Cause I don't really know what, uh, what much what's left for them to do. Yeah. You know what I mean, Nothing. like uh, in NXT, what's left for them really? And I that's mean, why Ruby got called up probably because there was, Ruby would never go anywhere. She's a number three baby face on the brand. She's never and, had so a chance. Here, yeah, here's my thing with, with Ruby. I'm not surprised Ruby was called up fast anyway. She's been on in NXT, what, less than a year? I yeah. mean, her being called up fast, she was ready anyway. The rest of them, it's, you know, we could we could maybe make an argument that they may, may not be ready. But I actually, and this honestly kind of leads into when we talk about our second topic, but I just want to get out of the way now because I think that, and this is probably just pipe dream shit, you know. So take it for what it is. I want to do it at a different. I want to take this whole this whole thing on 
from a different angle perspective. I kind of feel, and I think I've told you guys this before, I think I I feel like, especially on the SmackDown side, that there's a power grab going on with Daniel Bryan. Definitely. Okay. I, I have this feeling a lot of people are kind of thinking, he's going to turn heel, you know, he's been acting weird on SmackDown and stuff. I have this feeling that Daniel Bryan is the one kind of pulling some strings. Maybe he's the one who brought in the women. He did. Well, Shane implied that, yeah. He admitted so that. He, he signed there's, there's a reason, you know. So even though it's the same trio, which I can't really put a finger on as to why they chose, like, three lookalikes, you know. That's, that's hard to justify. It's hard to you know, make a good reason for it. No but if you want to just, if you want to look past that and just maybe think of it from a storyline perspective, I just kind of get this feeling that Daniel Bryan's about to make a big play. And it wouldn't surprise me if it leaks over into raw a little bit and maybe not. I don't know. Cause I don't know their long-term goals. We always shit on them because we don't know if they even have long-term goals sometimes, but definitely on the SmackDown side, something's up, right? Well, and I feel like the women are like the, the, just kind of the tip of the iceberg as to what's about to take transpire in that Shane Daniel Bryan dynamic. Well, that would be, that's just where I'm at with this, you know. Before Kim yeah. talks, let me ask y'all this real quick: Do you think it's possible Paige could be behind both? No. Okay. Um, I don't think it's impossible. I mean, I'm not. I would I would lean towards no, but that 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 would be kind of interesting. But that would give credence to why it was basically the same yeah, thing. That's the only way you could go with that, right? I mean, it's the only way you could justify the same looking group. I mean, but really, even even still, it's like, okay, is just Paige just being funny? Like, ha, I'm going to start a stable on both brands, and they're all going to look the same. Ha, ha, ha. Like, I mean, even still, like, right. it just doesn't work, and like, you know? And I'm not, again, live, live uh, tours with the SmackDown girls, right? On the uh, house show circuit. Like, she's toured with them when they needed an extra person. So I'm not shocked at her being called up. I just... Right. You... We, so, WWE has a lot we can criticize them for. A lot. But one of the main criticisms is putting people in, in situations in which they can't succeed. Right? right? I think the most notable example that we've had in the past five, six, seven years is when they put Curtis Axel with Paul Heyman. He was never going to succeed. Right? And that almost ruined his career. Um, you can't put people in a situation where they won't succeed knowingly. It's one thing to do it accidentally. But knowingly. Right. Like um, the Bray Wyatt Randy Orton match, House of Horrors. They didn't think that would be trash. But it ended up being a really bad thing for both guys. Mm. But yeah, I did. This situation, you're knowingly putting her to fail. This is not what her, Sarah, and Ruby are good at. Well, I will it's say this: well, like, I, think I think Ruby will be able to pull it off. Yeah, I don't know. I don't. Yeah. I don't know about the other two. I think Ruby is uh, matured as you know. She's just as a performer. Her time and other promotions. Oh, and Sarah like is solid as well, dude. Sarah's a really, really good hand. Yes. I, I, I definitely think if any of them will not fail, if you say, hey, give me one of these who's going to be fine, I'm definitely taking Ruby because I feel Absolutely, like yeah. she's got a real chance to be super, super special. I'm glad she got called up quick because she really is worth the hype, and I think she'll pull it off. As for your point with Liv and them, yeah, I mean, it really could be one of those situations, especially when you put her, like, on the brand with Carmella. Like, they're, like – what are you doing? Like you're person. basically someone's someone's getting screwed here, you know? Carmel, Carmella's already established. So Carmel's it's like from, Carmella's from Staten Island. Liv is from, from Jersey. Carmella likes Jordans. Liv likes Jordans. Carmella likes rap. Liv likes rap. Carmella well, wears her hair backwards. The... Liv wears her hat backwards. It's they're the same person. And it, they've already been getting after each other on Twitter already. That's real. Like the second it happened. Like that's no a part of that is real because Liv really did have Carmella blocked. Did she really? She really did. Like part of that is legitimately real. They remember they were in the PC together for a while because Liv has been signed for a a few years. 
So, Caleb, what do you, what do you think? I mean, you want to add anything to this? I want to add, um, I think I might be the most optimistic about these angles, to be honest with you. Oh, right. From the three of us. For once, that's interesting. Which is, no doubt. yeah, that's, yeah. Um, I'm very interested in the Raw one. Uh, I didn't know the, like, the shit about uh, Paige training with Mandy and, <sighs> and Sonya. I didn't know that. Nor did I, but, uh, yeah, I didn't know that either. Very interested to see where they go with that. And I hope, and again, I pray, and again, I beg <laughs> that finally they take that women's title from Alexa and they put it on. I don't care. Put it on page. I don't give a shit. That's where I'm at. You know, we'll see. I'll, I'll, I mean, my biggest takeaway from all of it was two things. One, yeah. and it's really just the same thing, basically. Oh, and oh, pardon me. I'm going to cut you off. Um, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Ruby Riot, a lot of people are going to find out that she is fucking awesome. Oh, yeah. That's Absolutely. Yeah. But and that, she, that's part of Is she this. awesome as a heel? Is she awesome in an in antagonist role? I mean, I don't know. I've never yeah. seen her work heel before. I guess I'm, we'll I'm find out. I'm give it a shot, though. But are you willing to ruin the character while she's mm-hmm. getting introduced to millions of people to do that? When you have Billy and Peyton who have excelled as antagonists... Or Mercedes Martinez, who can who has excelled as an antagonist. There are all these people out here who ha- I hate the chick, but Sage Beckett, she's huge, like big, not like huge, but you know what I mean, like a nice size. Yeah, who, no. You know no. what I'm saying? You have all these heel characters who are ready, and you pick the three right. perkiest baby faces you can find. Yeah. Well, I will just like just basically for me, there's two things, and I'll and I'll be done with this because. It's really going to be interesting to see where they go, especially on the SmackDown side. One, I just want to say I'm so glad to see Paige back. Like, I, I mean, after the, the year, year and a half she's had, just all the the shit that's gone down in her life, I really hope that, that this is her. That to me, this might be her opportunity, you know, at least in the WWE, to really, like, put the, you know what I mean? Just be, yeah. I can't even put it to words. Like she's done with Del Rio. Your, so that helps. Take, so, yeah. yes. It, take your, take this opportunity and don't fuck it's it up. It's so insane that like they're putting her in this spot so soon because like, let's remember when TNA's slam anniversary came about, about four months ago, she yeah. was sitting like third or fourth row in a Lucha mask the whole time. But it, well, goes, you know, but it goes to show you that, uh, I mean, well, hell, they they gave Paige a uh, Stone Cold podcast yep. on the network. They well, made her. I know why they gave it to her, but they still gave it to her. They could have done anybody. They still did, yeah. They could have done anybody. Yeah. They uh, put her, they had her as a uh, tough enough host. They okayed yep. the movie. Like, they really care about the chick. Clearly. Absolutely, yeah. Clearly, they know they, they have they, something. They know they have something. And um, yeah. I want to throw one little thing out again. To add more more context and more story to Paige called, br- coming back and bringing two people with her, we know eventually Asuka is going to win the title. Yeah. So doesn't yeah. it make sense for Paige, who knows she's been gone forever, to make sure she has insurance when she goes after Asuka? Because nobody's ready for yeah. her, right? Yeah. I just want to put that bug in y'all's minds because that's the, that's the goal, isn't it? Oscar well, see, I, I actually think that Oscar is going to win the title from Paige. I think Paige will win it before Oscar. Okay, that could well, be. Either oh, way it goes, just... if Oscar, if Paige is chasing Oscar, Oscar chasing Paige, whatever the case is, the heel has, you know, goons now. That's, yeah, that's she's got buddies. Gotta go yeah, through. yeah. The, and just to finish off, what I was going to say off sides of Paige, I'm really also excited for Ruby Riot. Like to me, this is like. The opportunity for her, especially to, to for people that don't know about her and haven't watched NXT, haven't watched her, you know, prior to really get a taste of how good she really is. And we're just hoping, kind of beyond hope here, I guess, that she's gonna be able to pull off the heel work. And if she if she does, that's gonna say so much about her. Just so, a meet, I mean, stepping into the big stage on a completely different. In a completely different format than what she would be used to. You know what I'm saying? So the, just think about the full package of Ruby. Let's say Ruby comes out Tuesday. 
by herself for a match. Just Ruby, Ruby Tuesday. Tuesday. Hell yeah. There. <laughs> so we're going to have her music, which is infectious as all hell. That's not heel music, right? That's not something that's gonna that's gonna garner ire. And this isn't the Sami Zayn situation where uh, they got new music. I bet, dude. Okay, maybe so. But the just music just... she has, the music she has now is perfect, right? It's just I just it just does it's it doesn't make any sense, and it bothers me that it doesn't make any sense. It just it. I will say to you what we always oh. say to everyone else. We gotta give it a chance. Absolutely. We gotta see what happens. Absolutely, you know? I'm 100 percent behind that. Hashtag right now. give Ruby a chance. Oh, Ruby it might, is, it Ruby might has seem a, a little strange right now. It's a little strange right now, but we gotta. I mean, we still got. She just debuted, so we don't even know what's gonna happen this upcoming Tuesday. You know, right? No, this exactly. first week they were, we're just not, doing. Yeah, anything. we don't even know like what the motive is yet, and that's no, the most interesting. Part. But we know she's not baby. Right. Yeah. We do know that. We know that. We know that for a fact. So. It'll be interesting to see what they have planned for her as time moves moves on. So, yeah, I they killed the Becky Lynch so bad she's gonna go film a movie now. I'm telling you, man, <laughs> she must be really hurt. I fucking hope, like, man, I'm actually gonna watch Marine Six. I'm not lying. Just because of Becky? I don't. I haven't watched any. Just of to those, see, so just to see that Becky Lynch performance. Yeah, I've seen Marine One. It's not shitty. Have you seen yeah, any of the Miss? <laughs> Uh, no. Oh, well, see. And I've not seen Marine 2 either, but, um... And, and can I tell we, you how uh, much I hate the way Paige talks? Sweet, uh... I, I hate that shit. Well, move on. Fucking move on. xenophobe. Move God on. God damn it, move Rance. On. Get it together. <laughs> what did I, did I... Am I, am I, am I racist against vampires or something? No, <laughs> no, I said you're a xenophobe. You, you hate the British, man. See, okay. here's the thing. Here's the thing Rance doesn't tell you is that when he's in group chats and stuff, he talks about how, like, why the fuck are they using all these extra U's in their words and shit? What's going on there? Or maybe that's <laughs> someone else in the group I chat. Still have but, uh, all, I still have all of the tape from the beginning of the recording. Remember that. <laughs> I guess you do, pal. But, um, <laughs> all right. So we talked about, um, man. Let's talk Sammy about let's talk about let's talk about no 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 let's talk about team Kevin and Sammy and uh, team Sammy and Kevin sir either way either way have y'all have, uh, by the way have y'all seen that meme of Nelson and uh, what's yes, that little kid I have. yes so, <laughs> it's so perfect yep it's hilarious yep. the be- yeah yeah it's one of the better ones I've seen absolutely yes, that's what fucking bums me out so much is like. Now we're not hearing Sammy's theme when they come out. We're just hearing Kevin, and yeah, it's better because Sammy's uh, Z- Sammy's theme is so upbeat. I can see you dancing to it. Kevin's theme has no way to dance to it, and Sammy's out there just ki- killing it. Yes, he is somehow. Yeah, um, but <laughs> top heels on SmackDown. I think that's fair to say. Sure. Um, yeah. And they were almost quote unquote fired on Tuesday by one Shane McMahon. Yeah. Daniel Bryan put a stop to it. He said, no, 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 let's do a lumberjack match. Let's put the new day in there, blah, blah, blah. And um, Shane left halfway through the show and he said, you know what? I'm, I'm going to leave so I don't do anything rash. And I assume <laughs> you're going to fire them after their match. And that didn't spell anything out for me at all. I didn't know what was going to happen. But right. <laughs> um, against all odds, Team Kevin and Sammy prevailed. And um, Kevin escaped. Sammy took a beat down. That's uh, further um, fuel to the fire that is their whole angle. Um, Kevin had to beg for the job. To, to keep his job, rather. Mm-hmm. And Brian said he ain't going to fire him. And they ended with, we're going to get Orton and Owens next week, which, cool, whatever. But um, we're going to talk about, we're, t- we're talking about Kevin and Sammy, okay? Carl, yeah. w- what, what do you have to say? What do you have to say for yourself? Okay. Chris? First of all, I want to say this. about After Kevin escaped and Sammy took the beating, Ke- Kevin's begging hands and knees forgiveness stuff was just 
outstanding. Yeah. Oh, like, and uh, nice storytelling at the beginning of the show. Kevin said, you should be begging us to stay here. Right. Yeah. Then, yeah. Very a good call back there. But so Kevin Owens, man, him and Sammy are just perfect. Right. Together. They're perfect. Like they are destined to always be together, as they say, fight forever. Right now it's friends forever, but soon you know what's coming. Absolutely. Uh, we need but, that friends forever shirt. I'm sorry. We still need that. I would, I would buy that. So yes. Well, let, let's, let's think about this for a second. The, the beauty, this is the most interesting story in WWE right now. <clears throat> and I think that's the case by a law. I think it's a wide margin from this story to whatever's next. Pick one. I think this is the best. I really do think right now this is the best story. Um, there's a lot of layers here because first it kind of starts with Brian and Shane. Like they obviously are at odds with each other. And even though there's the tension is ridiculous, it's almost like Shane is, he's a McMahon, right? So he's cocky enough to think that, eh, there might be some tension, but it's no biggie. I'm out. You got this. He's not worried about anything. You know, because he's a McMahon. That's how McMahons are. Um, and Daniel is the more level-headed. But it seems like ever since Shane didn't notify him of the Under Siege stuff in the uh, Survivor Series, that things have, you know, Daniel's been taking a very different approach. And even though he tried to, you know, make peace at Raw and all that stuff. But the thing is, as Kevin and Sammy put it in the ring, they, you know, and it's funny, Caleb, I got to give you some credit because when we, when we talked about, uh, when we got into the whole argument about knowing your worth, remember that a couple weeks ago, yes. they kind of alluded to that in their promos. You know, you know how important we are, you know, how, and like, I, I, obviously I think it's a little bit of that real life seeping into the WWE. Yeah. And yeah. I, I love it because Daniel Bryan obviously knows you can't just fire Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. You can't just do that. I mean, you could, but why would you, right? Because they're valuable. Yeah. And I think it's I think it's beautiful. And I, for me, it's not even so much about Kevin and Sami as much as it's about Daniel Bryan. And I'm going to go back to this because something's happening here. There's a power play going on, and Daniel Bryan is at the center of all of it. And I honestly, it makes me wonder a little bit about where we're at with him in terms of getting back in the ring. We got to be close, man. I don't know. I'm like, I'm, I don't know. Like every time, every, and I, won't, I don't want to go into, into yeah, detail about it, man. but what I'm saying is it makes me wonder. You know, yeah. it, just, it does give that air of, hmm. And, and I think that, you know, Kevin and Sammy, we kind of have an idea of where this is going. I know Caleb has some thoughts on where he'd like to see those two go. You know, and we'll, we'll, I'll probably let you, you know, cover that. But Kevin and Sammy are like, it's almost like a small part of a big puzzle. And, I, and I, that's why I think the whole thing is really interesting. Uh, and why I would say that it's the most interesting story. Because when you're talking about WWE, for me, I'm always thinking about the story. And this is the one story that I'm like, okay, I don't actually know what's happening right now. But I know it's going to be good. Something is going to happen. It's going to be awesome. And because we're getting close to WrestleMania, this is when they usually start pulling the, the rabbits out of the hat. You sure. know what I mean? Sure. So Connecting the that's kind of where I'm at with that. Yeah. So you guys, one of you guys want to pick it up? Rance hasn't said anything. I want to hear what he has to say. Um. So can, can the Kevin and Sammy story be the most interesting story if you alluded to the fact that it's a bigger picture? Because I, I well, it, with what you're saying, I think Daniel and Shane is is the more pertinent, more interesting story because of the dynamic yeah. involved, including Sammy, Sammy and Kevin. Now Sammy and Kevin are doing excellent work. They're Absolutely. probably the most enjoyable parts of of any show, not named NXT. Money to right. They're they're and, and real quick before, real quick just to, before you before you go on I hate to cut you off go ahead. but let's think about last year who was the best the best two little tandem before that There's Kevin Owens and Chris Jericho. Jericho the common denominator who is it Kevin Owens Kevin, Kevin Owens. Owens I'm telling you and I'm not trying to shit on Sammy or Jericho no, 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 they're no, all sure, great sure. Kevin Absolutely. Owens and I've been singing this guy's praises might be the best guy in the company overall as a package. 
because he can do everything and he always keeps it interesting. But go well, ahead, Rance. But he's fat, Carl. Um, if, <laughs> if 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 I can go over a quick tangent because what you just said it made me think of something. So I think the three guys, the four guys, the three guys from a character perspective that you could say had the best year this year would be Kevin, Miz, mm-hmm. and Braun, right? I can, yeah, I can get with that. From a character perspective, I would argue the reason that those guys are the three MVPs of the year, and AJ would be in there too, but it's more in ring than character wise. Sure. Is because those three guys, more than anybody on the roster, know who the fuck they are. Yeah. That's 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 probably Kevin's most valuable asset is at the end of the day, beginning of the day, noon and anywhere in between, he knows who he is as a character. Right. That's very important. I just wanted to point that out since you said that. Um Brian is up to something. And Definitely. I don't think if they didn't bring Brian back for the Miz situation, they're not going to bring him back now. I'm not saying he won't ever wrestle again in WWE, but it's not going to be for this. Okay. But WWE ain't stupid. They Vince is the first <clears throat> person to tell you that there's no bad, there's no such thing as, as bad publicity. Any publicity is good publicity, right? So I think they know that, okay, well, Brian and I cheered talking to everybody and said, I want to wrestle again. I'll wrestle if I don't have to leave, I'll wrestle again. Brian, uh, you know, everybody, all the fans are out here saying, we want we want to see Brian wrestle again if he can, right? All this is out, in the, out there now. I think they're using that to their advantage in these storylines, which is why they keep giving him storyline after storyline after storyline of people having issues with him personally, right? Right. Which is why they let Kane quote unquote choke slam him in the dark, right? Sure. Think about it. Think about it. And I know it's a, I know it's just a general manager thing. It's just the way they write authorities figures in WWE. But Brian had beef with somebody the entire time he's been general manager. At some Pretty point much, or another, yeah. right? So I I really think they're playing on our as a crowd aspirations to see him want to wrestle again. And ultimately, he's not. I don't think he will. Not in WWE, at least. I hope he doesn't, but that's another conversation. Um, I do think it's interesting. I don't know if it's this bigger picture because we'll probably see Owens and Zayn versus the Usos at Mania. Like, it won't be like a huge match. Um, uh, I, that, you, you can say, oh, you want. That's a four-star match in, in, in the works. And even no matter where it's on the card. It's a great match. Right. In fact, you yourself, Caleb, said that you think the Usos are the MVP of the year. Yeah. Right? So yeah, that'd absolutely. be a great match. It, well, I mean, he said the Usos are somehow the wrestler of the year. There's two of them, but it's, it's fine. A, it's as fine. An act, as an act, yes. And I, and they're in, the, they're in the small discussion. I would agree with that. Um, right. But so don't moan that because will it get the – lip service it deserves in the hierarchy of all the possible matches probably not but it'll be a great match nonetheless if it happens but i'm saying that to say i don't have the hope that carl has for the ultimate payoff for this for this match for this uh for this storyline i think that it's going to lead to something nice something big something you know probably that can be like the main story of a show but ultimately, will it lead to something bigger for both characters? I don't think so. Because Owens just feuded with the boss, right? He just won the main event of a pay-per-view. So yeah. unless he's fighting for the world title, there's nowhere else higher for him to go. That's not going to happen. So we right. just stick to Well, I mean, story. unless it was one of those things where you're like, you're trying to get behind the guy. Like, you got, you've got two authority figures. You've got yeah. Shane. You've got Daniel. Obviously, you're not getting in the good graces of Shane. Okay. Right. Right. If if you if you say okay, I'm putting my I'm putting all my money on Daniel Bryan. He's got this power play. He's trying to get control of SmackDown, and I'm putting all my eggs in that basket. Okay. And I'm gonna get on Daniel Bryan's side, and if it all works out, I'm taking this gamble. If it all works out, mm-hmm. then me, Kevin Owens, 
I'm using Daniel Bryan to my advantage to get where I want to go, which is ultimately that world title. I hear you, but would that happen? The problem is he's got Sammy in his way as well, so there's kind of he's using so, everybody. Do you, you know think, what I mean? Do you think that? And I guess I ask this to you, Caleb, because Caleb, you're the resident Sammy and Kevin expert. Okay. Does this ultimately lead? What does this lead? Do, are we going to see Kevin versus Sammy finally at WrestleMania at the end of the year? Because I don't uh, think they would turn Sammy so drastically just to turn it right back so quick. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm not. I'm, it's hard to say because, you know, you've got that added wrinkle of Shane and Brian now. I mean, if it were by itself, I'd say absolutely this is going to end up with Owens versus Zayn at Mania. But it's so hard to. It's hard to put a, like a pinpoint on where they're going to go with this because of the Shane and Brian dimension that's been added. Mm-hmm. But I'm I'm sorry, man. I, I wish I had a, a a theory here, but I don't blame you because I don't I, either. It's hard to say. Something just crossed my mind, though. I know what I hope for, but what do you hope yeah. for? Tell me that. Um, if you get it away from Shane and Brian a little. Mm-hmm. Um, let it be by itself. Uh, turn Z- uh, keep Zane as the heel and mm-hmm. run Owens as the face, because I think that's the more interesting story to tell. Because yeah, a, mi- a million times over on the main roster, in NXT, in Ring of Honor, in in Pro Wrestling Gorilla, sure, we've seen the Owens and Zane feud with Zane as the face every time. So just you know, from the interest of and you know maybe I'm biased, but I think Zane's kind of proven he can work heel. He absolutely can work heel. No, that's not bias. That's just truth. Yeah. He's done a great job as a heel. And Excellent. it would be very like, with, with Sammy especially, I think, as Rance had said, you turned, you just turned him. You yeah. know what I mean? Extremely like, drastically. Always, Extremely drastically. Yeah. So yes. it's like, are you really going to go back that quick? And that's kind of like my theory. Like, you guys don't really have a theory. You're not sure. That yeah. That's my theory is that Owens is doing what Owens does. Owens is playing Sammy. Owens is playing Daniel Bryan to get what he wants. But I think at the end of the day, what Owens will not be expecting is that Sammy is doing the same. You because I think know. Sammy has, I think Sammy has seen the light, so to speak. Yeah. And it's going to be a Once matter again. of right. It's going to be a matter of who gets there first. You know yes. what I mean? And I think that's the right story to tell. Leading up into WrestleMania, I think that's the right story to tell. I don't know if they'll tell it, but when I think about it and I analyze it, I think that's why I think Kevin and Sammy is the more interesting because I think that the whole Daniel Bryan situation is going to backfire on him because I think he's being used and doesn't realize it yet. Wish list item. I got four words for you. Festival of Friendship 2. 2. Yes. Now, wouldn't that be some shit that happens? Um, that would Kevin, be, yeah. Can I throw an alternative out there? Absolutely. Sure. Go ahead, dude. We love it. We're fantasy booking, kind of. Yeah, right? that's what we're doing, brother, brother. So, we've been under the impression, um, us as general internet contingents, right, fans of what, whatnot, that we would see AJ Shinsuke in some form or fashion at WrestleMania. Yeah. yeah. They've been teasing a lot of that. Yeah. yeah. And, and... He's not buried or nothing, but Shinsuke clearly has been cooled off. Yes. Right? Yeah, absolutely. With AJ being a very notorious Shane guy, right? After they fought, there's a genuine respect between the two. And if we do go with this possible coup you're speaking of with Brian behind his fellow indie guys and Owens and Zayn, Yep. Mm-hmm. Could we see a possible? Because I, I, if as we stand now, again, I'm I'm just a million miles a minute. As we stand now, Bronze winning the Rumble, in my opinion, right now, as we stand. Um, could we see a triple threat between AJ, Zayn, and Owens, with Brian trying to usurp AJ as the champ and give his guys the opportunity? Hmm. I thought- I think I honestly think because I think anything is possible at this point. You know what I mean? Because everything feels like there's a door open because it's weird because if there's a power play going on, like we're all kind of suspecting, mm-hmm. 
at some point, AJ has got to get involved, or whoever the WWE champion is, assuming AJ it retains the Clash of the Champions, Where right? would be the point? The champ has to be involved in this some way. Yes. And AJ has proven that even though he is a beloved character, he doesn't mind being a bad guy sometimes. You, you know, he's done some things. Yeah. And so I think that there's a dynamic there of like, all right, is AJ the centerpiece of all of this? Because who can win over the, you know, the phenomenal one? How does this work? There's a lot, like I said, there's a lot of moving parts. And, and it, it really AJ like got beef. Well, sure. Yeah, of course. So there's just, I think there's a lot that can be done. It's just a matter of, are we all just drawing huge conclusions and pipe dreams? Or is WWE just going to be like, eh, yeah, yeah. See, you know, so, like they do sometimes, or or they do the WrestleMania thing that they do so well during this time of year, and be like, "Ha, got you, motherfuckers!" and well, give us something that, that we yeah, really that's want amazing. to see. So that, so that's my issue with this. As, as I guess that's the reoccurring thing for me. As I'm speaking on this evening, I'm willing to give them the chance to get there, but I'm skeptical as to where it can go. Right. Like this angle does nothing for me, or for actually, I, in my opinion, for either character. Speaking of Owens and Zayn, if it's not headed to the top program on the card, which involves sure. the title, uh, Owens is a United States multi-time United States champ. Owens is a multi-time uh, Intercontinental champ. Unless you want to give the Usos the platform they so rightly deserve at the top of the card. There's nothing else that they can do, Zayn and Owens together in the in this in this storyline unless it involves the world title. Because well, I do, I, you, I just do gave, that... you just gave Owens the top feud on the card against the boss and he won. What else is right. there to do? So that's that's my I, th- I do think the, the the caveat in between all of this is gonna involve a Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn tag title run. I do think that is going to be fit in somewhere. It doesn't have think, to be long. It does not have yeah. to be long because it doesn't, it's not, that doesn't matter really. Like I, yeah. but I do think that is going to happen in between now and WrestleMania. I legitimately think that will, uh, yeah. Uh, like you said, in between now and WrestleMania, maybe even as short as like start at the clash of champions and end at the Royal rumble. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, they already beat new day, right? Yeah. And, and so, yeah. Usos are already are pseudo do face. Clash of the champions. Sure, yeah. sure. And and Usos yeah. are pseudo face now. Okay. Sure. Yeah. I don't know if you guys watched the um YouTube or the Twitter videos after like after the backstage stuff, but uh at Survivor Series after New Day lost. The Usos were in the back, dapping them up, saying, Hey, don't worry about it. We good, we got it. Like they're yeah. true they really are truly sticking with the stick they got. They're still the same yeah. characters. But they're yeah. just and they're protagonists fighting now. bad guys now. Yeah, yeah. exactly. It's, it's they're just cool. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're, but it always was cool. Kind of. Yeah, that always was cool, but now it's like cool, we, not we trying to be dastardly. Cool. Yes, yes. I just want to see. I just I just wanted to. Zayn and Owens deserve great. They deserve the best. Yes, as characters, they've 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 proven that they're loyal. They've proven that they're in. In, in for it for the long haul, and they've proven that they're deserving of the things that of of give being given the ball. So you know, even if you don't give them the ball, give them a chance to like, put them in the game. Right. You know what I'm saying? So. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm with you. I just don't see a scenario here where Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn aren't going to get something big out of this. I'd be, I mean, I would be disappointed for both of them because I think I just, I really do think the work they've done, especially honestly, it sounds crazy because I'm not a big Sami Zayn guy, but especially Sami, because he had to deal with all that bland ass bullshit as, you know, but Carl, the face character and all that. You call just, it bland. I call it simple, but effective, but yeah, but, but Carl, it's fair. If, let's say if they do run, uh, the real team best friends. Uh, that was that was a shot at. Don't don't hate on <laughs> Chucky e. T or Trent. Yeah, Come on that now. Was a shot, yeah. <laughs> um, the real team best friends against the Usos. If you run sure. that program at WrestleMania, that's I mean 
it's not a demotion because that's a great program. No. You know what I'm saying? I don't think it's so a demotion. They, so it's, yeah. I don't think they can go anywhere where it'll be disappointing because it's still going to end up great. It's just not where I think it should end up. The only disappointment there would be if they killed it before it got to WrestleMania. Okay, I can rock with that. I can rock you with know, that. if they did something like, okay, this story is now over at the Royal Rumble. Eh, that's a problem. It's over I, at I the Royal Rumble, and yeah, Kevin Owens is doing uh, something. Mm, right. Sami Zayn's going to be in catering. I don't have a problem with that as long as they get elevated after that program. Right. Oh, okay. if, they, if, they're, if they're tagging against this guy and that guy at, the, at WrestleMania, but they ran a one-month Usos Zayn Owens feud. Yeah, we got some talk. We got need some explanations. Yeah. You mean to tell me you would need there would be some splaining to do if both those guys were in the Andre this year? I, I know. Hell yes. You know, <laughs> absolutely. I know. Like okay, think about this, Caleb. What do yeah, you think? Yeah, what's up? Let's just think about this. All right. Let's just say for a damn second that. Eddie Guerrero got booked in the Andre the Giant Battle Royal, especially oh. after like a great program that all the great programs he's had. If he had a great program like this and they were like, you know what, Eddie, you're going to be in the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal this year. What do you think his response would be to that? He'd say something like, I'm going to make it work, Jesse. Viva la raza! <laughs> okay. I like it. I got to fit him in, guys. I'm sorry. Yeah, he has to shoehorn that into every episode. I'm a mark. <laughs> mark for it. A Mizark for it, yep. Um, <laughs> I think it's time to move on. Marine 6 on Blu-ray, coming next year. Um, <laughs> okay, so I'm not as well initiated on this one. Uh, Rants, introduce the next topic, sir. So, uh, one of our modern legends, one of, uh, one of uh, our most recent Legends Dave Batista, uh, y'all know Go. the story about he le- how about him leaving, about him becoming a genuine super not want to say superstar but a genuine star in the in Hollywood, right? Well, sure. uh, Batista, to his credit, has always he's never bashed the business, he's never bashed Vince or, or Hunter, he's never bashed WWE. He has openly said those things he doesn't like, but he never bashed them. But he's always, always talked about how he would love to continue or to come back at one point. Well, it's come out recently that uh, on actually on uh, Jim Ross's podcast, uh, he is actively talking with Vince to come back. The thing that I find most interesting is that he is completely against a one off. He wants to come back and pull the Jericho. He wants to do house shows. He wants to get us in the story he really he loves the business and of course he wants to have his uh final encounter if you will with triple h which I'll, i'm all for get it over with be done i'm all for it right i'm good with that because they have great chemistry together and i'm all for you know everything isn't for us in wrestling uh let that man have the one thing he wants i'm fine with that be done with that you give him a three match arc, then we can talk about having a problem. We give him that one match. Um, but I, I I think it's interesting that not only does he want to come back, especially considering how he's at the apex of his career. You know, they're talking about a possible what what was his character in Blade Runner? But they're talking about doing something with him and a spinoff. He was the top henchman in the um, in the whatever movie it was Bond. the the Bond movie. Drax is going to have a major role in Infinity War. Like, he's Blade really Runner? doing his thing. Bla- yeah, well, I said Blade Runner, yeah. Uh, okay, sorry, you know, I didn't hear that, my bad. He, he was starred in the new Kickboxer remake. Like, he's really doing a big deal. He really wants to come yeah. Yeah, I, It's interesting that he loves wrestling enough to say, screw that, I'll make that work, I want to come back. Um, One thing, though, that was interesting uh, in the interview was how he had a problem with them not having anything for him to do when he came back the last time. One situation in general, they didn't. One situation in general, uh, I don't know if you remember, but he had a, a match with Dolph Ziggler on a SmackDown. Yeah. I think it was two matches. It was a Raw and a SmackDown match, but it started on SmackDown. Um, 
Well, apparently they said, screw it, Dolph, just talk shit about him on Twitter, and that'll be why y'all beef. And he hated that because something on Twitter, that's not a story. I just found that interesting. Uh, but I'm curious t- for you guys. Um, uh, I know you guys hate part-timers. Well, not you guys, Caleb, you hate part-timers. <laughs> uh, but I appreciate when a part-timer says I'm going to come back and be full-time. Right. Oh, hell yeah, dude. Uh, so my question to you is, uh, are you excited to see Batista back? One, two, if he does come back, what would you like to see him do? And three, uh, well, let's just do a stick with those two right now. Okay. All right. So am I excited to see Batista come back if that does come to fruition? Hell yeah, dude. I loved him as Drax, man. So I've, I've like really kind of turned a corner on Batista after that uh, 2014 run. But yeah, um, I hope he's in better shape than he was then because, eh, you know, but Hey, you know, that's whatever. We'll see how that goes. Um, there's nothing in particular that I'd want to see him do, you know, that I can think of off the top of my head. Uh, maybe Brock Lesnar. Absolutely. Possibly. Yes. I would rather like if because um, I, I don't really care to see the, the Batista and Triple H thing, because to me, like you had your final encounter in 2005 and I would prefer that you leave it there. But for the and that's the same reason I don't like the Kurt Angle and Triple H rumored match. But, you know, whatever. Um, but no, I, I would love to see him in there with uh, someone preferably someone he's never faced before, even if that, if that is like a Brock Lesnar, who he never faced on the main roster, even if he might have faced him in OVW. But, yeah. What, what, about, um, what about Roman and and, and, uh, and Batista? Uh, that, that I don't point? know. I'm not, yeah, not really interested in that one. Do you remember when they had the, the triple threat? Not triple threat, but the six-man tag, uh, Evolution and Shield? Yeah. When it yeah, was absolutely. Just, when, uh, when it was just Batista and Roman in the ring for like eight minutes. Yeah, yeah, because uh, yeah, because the other they were, the crowd. were battling outside. Yeah, I think that was an enjoyable eight minutes. <clears throat> okay, yeah, but so Caleb they, agrees clearly. But no, 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 no. But no, I'm trying to. It's been a while since I've seen that match. Like, weren't they just kind of laid out for the most part, though? They were laid out for a good portion of it, but there was a good five. So they they started going at it then they laid out whatever whatever laid them out then they showed seth doing seth things in the crowd and then they went yeah. back to having seth things he, he flies right he's an architect yeah and then they had the finishing sequence which was about four or five minutes so i think it was enjoyable because batista is a very underrated worker for somebody and he was trash at, be, at the beginning of his career but he really uh learned to work a match well and he, he knows it he knows his he he's he's a true uh, proponent of accentuate your positives and hide your negatives. He knows what he's good at. He knows what he's not good at, and he plays that well. And the one thing I've always appreciated about Bob Batista for being as big as he is six six two eighty two ninety, he always sells. He will sell his ass off. He was selling for Rey Mysterio. <clears throat> you know, he yeah. always sells. I mean, look at how he sold the Brian situation. You know. He sold the uh, uh, yes lock like he was about to rip his have his arm ripped out. Um, but I'm I'm all for it. I, I'm all for the dude. I think it would be a good uh, move for WWE, uh, especially with the with the publicity they can get from him. I think that in the situation that we're at, um, I think he's fresh enough that uh, he's not going that he, he's not going to be. Shit on like he was last time because he's not taking anybody's spot. Uh, and there's so many fresh matchups for him. And he's still a big enough name that the people back in the days, 10 years ago, who used to watch, who don't watch anymore, say, oh, that's interesting. You know, I, I, I just don't see any negative of it unless he runs 18 months or something. Unless, And if he's having good matches, cool. But I don't see an 18-month run of him with all the movies he has lined up. Carl, go ahead. I- before well before Carl goes ahead, I want to say, 
even if Batista is like as a uh, uh, trash as he might have been in 2014, I will still be excited for him up until the bell rings. That's for sure. And by the way, Batista wasn't trash in 2014. I, I completely disagree with that. I are, okay. I, I, I completely agree that he was extremely gassed and his performance in that Royal Rumble he won was <laughs> terrible. And the match with Del Rio was bad, but I put that more on Del Rio than Batista. But everything he did from that Del Rio match on was great stuff. He wrestled every so he- Raw. He wrestled every SmackDown. The match at WrestleMania was amazing. Both both Shield matches were both Shield matches were amazing. So what you're telling me is he worked better as a heel when he had suggested to come back as a heel the whole time. Absolutely. Is that no. what you're saying? They fucked up with that. They know they fucked up. Sure. You're, you're damn right they did. Yeah. They, know they fucked up. Absolutely. Carl, Absolutely. what's up, dude? What's going on, guys? Uh, yeah. So first of all. The reason, and this this is um, revisionist history, if you will, but the reason why every, and this is my opinion, I don't, you know, whatever y'all think afterwards, I'll respect it, but I don't care. So the reason why Batista's last run looks like shit is literally, it's, it doesn't have a fucking thing to do with being gassed. It has everything to do with Daniel Bryan. taking Daniel Bryan's spot. 100%. That's it. That's the only reason. If yep. he didn't come in and take Daniel Bryan's spot, we're not sitting here being like, oh, his last run was tr- trash. Was 100%. Trash. 100%. What, what happened was we hurt, we hurt everyone's little feelies, and Daniel Bryan's spot was taken, which it really turned out to work out perfectly in the end anyway. Regardless of what you feel about that, that's that. It was placed. Uh, no, uh, to it your wasn't. point about – what Batista wants to do with Triple H. The reason why I don't have a problem with this, and it's the same reason why I don't have a problem with Kurt Angle and Triple H at WrestleMania if they go that route. And Rant's kind of hit on it, and Caleb's rolling his eyes at me, but this is this is this is the thing. WrestleMania, okay? WrestleMania is it's you have to have something for everyone. Yep. Period. The end. WrestleMania is not just for guys like Caleb, it's not just for guys like Carl, it's not just for kids, it's not just WrestleMania is the event you have to have something for everyone, yep. think about how many older fans from my generation, because when Attitude was going on, I was 14, 15 years old think about how many fans they've lost from Attitude to now, right? I don't think they lost because they don't, I think they displaced them but sure. Well, because they don't do Attitude anymore, right? I know. How many people do you know that will talk about how, oh, I wish they did Attitude again. I'm Oh, the Attitude era was better. Right. P- PG killed wrestling. Right. PG sucks. But, but those guys, those guys that might be like, eh, about wrestling, they'll, they'll tune into WrestleMania to see Triple H and Kurt Angle. They may not tune in to see AJ Styles and Shinsuke Nakamura because they don't know who the fuck that is. But they will tune in to see Angle and Triple H. You bring in it, – it's, it's, it's all – for, for eyes. That's all it is, man. It's not about what we all want to see. It's about what everyone wants to see. So that's why I don't have a problem with Batista facing Triple H, if that's where they want to go for WrestleMania. Everyone gets so caught up in Triple H having a match. And to that, I just say, as long as Triple H isn't like... If he's working with a part-timer and he wins, who cares? Because they're part-timers, right? If he's working with a full-timer like when he does with Roman Reigns or Seth Rollins. What always happens? Ambrose. Right. You know, usually, well, Ambrose wasn't at WrestleMania, but just say at WrestleMania, and right? And he beat Ambrose, but yeah. He no, beat Ambrose. No, but at Ambrose WrestleMania, won, it was a dusty finish. Anyway, uh, Carl. No, 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 stop, 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 stop. Did I say anything factually incorrect? No, I'm not. I'm not even trying to argue that. I'm just. No, no, I'm no Did I say anything factually incorrect? Because you're rolling your eyes like I said some bullshit. Ambrose that, won the no, match. That's... It was a dusty finish. Am I, I wrong? I mean, it was a dusty finish, yes, Am but Ambrose didn't win. So, but, but yeah. The point was proven that Ambrose was the better man that night. He Laugh all the... See that laughing shit. Man. No, no, okay. no. I'm just... We, we, <laughs> went, we went off the path Move there. On, that's dog. all I'm laughing Move about, on, sir. Move no, on. anyways, all I'm getting at is that... We're trying to talk about Batista. What I'm getting at is that Triple H... Puts over the young guys at WrestleMania, and then whatever the fuck happens with guys like Sting or whatever, who cares, right? Like, who cares? It's nostalgia. That's all it's there for. That's I the care point. about Sting. No, you don't. My friend and Steve. So, I, 
I have a picture with Steve, sir. Anyways, anyways. The reason I'm cool with Batista because, first of all, it's going to bring in, as usual, that mainstream shit that WWE likes. They just do. They like that crap. If you're if you're a, if you're a movie star, Batista is now a crossover guy. He's well known in WWE circles. He's now known in Hollywood. If you haven't seen Guardians of the Galaxy, Guardians of the Galaxy Two, Blade Runner, or whatever, oh. you're basically living under and under a rock. You know what I mean? Like Drax was one of the high points of the Guardians of the Galaxy movies. Mm-hmm. So these are all that is great, and I do think it's great that Batista wants to say, "Hey, I'll do a full time schedule." So yeah, I'm fine with him coming back. I'm fine with him going out on his own terms because believe it or not, Batista is actually really fucking entertaining. I always thought, I mean, I don't think he's like a five-star wrestler or anything, but he was always fun to watch. You know, I, I mean, I loved his wheelchair shit when he was in the wheelchair and all that, you know, I love that stuff to me. It's, it's goofy, but it's, it's hilarious. Basketballs don't hold grudges. <laughs> so there's a lot, there's a lot there. And, and whether if it's 12, 18 months, I'm cool. You know what I want him to do. I don't like I wouldn't want it to be the Goldberg thing where he goes over someone for the universal title or anything like that. But I would like him to get an opportunity to do a program he wanted to do without it getting hijacked because they put him in the wrong position. If that makes sense. You know, they did something they shouldn't have. You know what I mean? Like because the Brian thing was just I mean, once they decided to do that, that was it. The the Batista thing was never going to work after that. You know, I wanted to just do let the man do what he wants to do in terms of if he wants to go out on an angle with Triple H, fine. Just let him do that. Just don't let it be something where it's going to screw over another chance for him to go out his way. I wouldn't have a problem with him getting a universal reign or whatever bread he goes to. It's probably going to be Rob. I would have a problem with him getting a small one um, because I, I, it just legitimizes the belt with somebody with his resume. And to see him going around Hollywood with his belt or to see him in being interviewed by whoever or whatever with the belt right there does nothing it does nothing but good things. But Well, yeah, but that's not guaranteed that he would actually like have the belt with him cuz Dwayne never had the belt with him in 2013. He did. He always had the belt with him. Go back and look. He did. Okay. Go okay. back and look. He had well, one where he went. Every, every, even everywhere still you with were, that, had, yes. Go back and look. Even okay. still with that, like that's to me, that's that's kind of whatever. I get, I, I see what you're what you're saying there, Rance, too. But like, I just don't like. My big deal is if they do something like that every time Raw comes on the air, I gotta sit there and watch another Raw with the fans doing whatever they're gonna do and yelling and screaming. And Twitter's gonna be a giant clusterfuck. I'm gonna, gonna be on Twitter, and it's gonna be it's gonna be political shit for half my timeline and the other half of the timeline I, is like ah I don't this think is worse than be, the gender mahal title I don't, reign. I don't think it's gonna be like that this way because for two reasons number one they're not gonna bring him back to the to the to the wrong alignment to in the crowd's eyes hold down the right guy number one and number two they're not stupid enough to give him the belt the second he gets back it'll be a story behind it it'll be a reason he won you know what I mean right so I don't think they'd be that against it. But I just want to prove your point about the WrestleMania situation. Um, if you watch the Super Bowl, right? The biggest yeah. the biggest show in America, in America every year. Non-football fans watch the Super Bowl. They don't care about football, but they watch for two reasons. Commercials, halftime show. There is something yep. for everybody in the Super Bowl. So yes. even if you don't care about what's going on, my mama watched the Super Bowl. I'm not going to watch no damn football. <laughs> but you know what, though? She damn sure watched every commercial come on. You know yeah, what I'm saying? No All my friends, girlfriends, and wives that don't watch sports watch the Super Bowl. Because, oh, Beyonce performing this year. Oh, Lady Gaga performing. Katy Perry. You know what right. I'm saying? So in the same vein as that, when you have a variety show – you got to have variety. So while it might not cater to the internet wrestling contingent, Batista versus Triple H or Triple H versus Kurt Angle is an important match on that card because it fills your nostalgia. And then you're going to have your internet classic match somewhere on the card for your work great guys. And it's, it's, everybody has something on the show. 
could you could you be more insulting when you say work rate guys next time, sir? Oh, I'll, I'll work on something more insulting for the next pod. Work rate guys and make well, that face full that, time. That's, that's, that's kind of the whole thing though, and this has always been, and I hate to turn this into a an argument, you know, but like for oh, me, I'm it's, ready, it's brother. always it's one thirty, and I'm ready, brother. I know, but it, it's that whole. For some reason, there's always this this we're misplaced and we don't understand. We we have troubles separating like business and wrestling. And I don't get that. It's weird to me because like you like, first of all, the business side of it is so important to make sure that the guys you're watching that you really like your work, great guys, whatever those guys, you got to have a business plan to make sure that those guys have a platform to succeed in the WWE. And part of that means sometimes we got to see triple H and Batista because we can say it all we want to. We all hate Stephanie McMahon. We all hate Triple H. But every time those motherfuckers come out, they get a huge reaction. It's just reality. Like, you may complain about it online, but what happened the second Triple H came out on Raw? When he came out in Pedigree Jason Jordan two weeks ago, what was shit. the reaction to Triple H? Oh, when the first when you know, the first riff of the music hit, they lost their shit. It's, it's, it's an undeniable reaction. So until people start not giving a fuck, you can't really complain that he's on the card at WrestleMania. You just can't. You can, but you, I mean, you're doing yourself a disservice because the reality is WrestleMania, just like every other wrestling show, like you said, it's a variety show. It is now. That's what it is now because it's so mainstream. WrestleMania is, is way more mainstream than it's ever been. You have to give them that. When they go to a town, the town will spend, all the news coverage is on WrestleMania. All the superstars go to – I mean, it is a mainstream – it's a big deal. So you can't just have, you know, well, your classic, you know, you know, like as Grant yeah. says, the work rate guys. You can't just have that, the whole show. You've got to have something. Orlando made $181 million last year. The city. That's, that's non-WrestleMania revenue. That's just the city. Basically, all the people that came in to the city. It's a lot of money. So it does matter. You know, it really does. And I think, you know, that that's kind of where I, that's kind of why I will defend those nostalgic matches. Now, if WrestleMania is nothing but nostalgia across the board, nobody will watch. Then we got a yeah. I, then we got a problem. And I'm with you guys. But a match or two here, I don't give a shit. I'm cool, man. So Batista back to WWE. WWE two thumbs up. I'm down. The guy wants to be a part of it. Let him be a part of it. <clears throat> yeah, I'm certainly not against it. That's yeah. for sure. We're all kind of in agreement there. Yeah. Hell yeah, dude. So there how you about have that, it. Uh, how about that Austin Aries promo that no one saw, huh? Huh? I still, I still haven't watched that. He's a good fucking person. He, <laughs> uh, that promo is trash. I'm just saying. I just appreciate that he, that he openly admitted that he was the reason he got fired and not nobody else. I, okay. I appreciate yeah. that because I'm so sick and tired of people getting leaving WWE and bashing them like they didn't that was they didn't get you hate them now cuz you don't work there but you loved them when you were there. Like that's... Well, he doesn't he kind of have to be a little careful cuz his his woman works there. No. I so I don't know that they're Punk, together anymore. Punk took the Are biggest, they not? Punk took the biggest shit in history. And AJ still work for the company. That's a good point, yeah. That's yeah. a good point. They don't, they don't mean I was shit. just thinking about that. I was just thinking about that. I don't like I haven't heard the promo. Maybe I should go back and listen to it. And, I don't know. And and, and this it's version, bad. And this version of tw- this twenty seventeen version of events and with Triple H as the second in command, he, he may be petty against people that's never worked for him, but he's not petty against people that's worked for him before. Because he has right. this Vince has squashed more beefs than I've ever seen Vince ever squash. Right? Did you watch sure. the Goldberg? The Goldberg 24? I've not seen that yet. It's really good. For- and Goldberg went back knowing that him and Vince were going to have beef. And Vince gave him the biggest hug ever and then laughed and talked. And he was like, maybe this ain't so bad. Yeah. Yeah, this, it's a different Vince, man. He's, he's getting old and trying to trying to repair those bridges. He don't have shit to prove the bucket. He doesn't have anything to prove anymore. What's there to prove? He's done it all. Well, he's got to prove himself to the to the to the smarts, pal. But but I mean, like, 
But he, he mocks God. He mocks <laughs> God. Wait, first of all, Vince is God. Apparently. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> you can't mock And may God all. strike me down. <laughs> and Shane steps away from them. <laughs> Boys, we are fucking rambling. That's, this is what happens when you record late, people. Yeah. Uh, let's, let's fucking bring it home. Let's just do that. Carl, no. uh, you, you got a Twitter? You got any of that shit? No, I don't. Um, yeah, you do, you fucking liar. You can find me at K-E-R-V-I-N-S-M-C. Um, usually just shitting on Caleb. So that's, yep. that's, what, I'm, that's what I'm doing. That's, our, that's uh, our, our, our pastime. We enjoy that. That is yeah. how it goes, man. Yeah. So, but yeah, hit me up on there. Um, hell, man. Ask me whatever you want. I'll give you my fire takes. I don't, I don't care. I'm not scared. Uh, that's it, man. That's it for me, man. I, I really don't do much else in terms of social media, so that's where you're going to find me. Yeah. So there you go. Hit up your boy. He, he has a private Instagram, but he hasn't told you guys about it. <laughs> so I keep all my dick pics, pal. Hell yeah. Rance, what up, dude? Give us a, uh, you, you got a Twitter? You got a, uh, you got any of that shit going on, man? I didn't need to know Carl had dick pics on the internet. That just really. Hell really Yeah. Amazing. Um, holla at me on Twitter at it's it's Ray Cash R E Y as a Mysterio C A S H as in dollars. Um, yeah, follow the pod at the SMC podcast. Don't forget the network Social Suplex. Uh, we have a new podcast coming to the family. We do. And the beauty of it is, it's the boss. The boss decided to have a, po- a podcast. Dude, it, it is not only the boss, it is my, and I'm sorry for saying this, Rich, James, Sierra, everyone involved with Social Suplex and Wrestling uh, Squared Circle, Jeremy Donovan's co-host, Josh Smith, the young boy, my personal favorite member, uh, admin of the Wrestling Squared Circle. So, yeah. Um, maybe look maybe if it. you're lucky... Maybe if you're lucky, he'll drunk dial you after a pay-per-view and tell you how bad a match was or something. You never know. Speaking of that, <laughs> he'll be on here real soon, guys. Real soon. Fuck yeah. Um, He's going to be on the... What? Can I tell him? Go ahead. I was going to keep it secret, but by, by all means. Well, you know, I'm going to break my one rule and advertise something before we record it. But uh, we are going to... We're going to review Wrestle Kingdom. We're going to review Wrestle Kingdom 12. That show that has those matches like Okada versus Naito, like uh, your Cody versus Kota Ibushi. Really excited for that one personally. Good match, yeah. Or or your Jericho Omega. <laughs> Jay two, White. Oh, two uh, matches of fire. Jay White, by the way, I'm gonna sh- I'm gonna show you a picture of Jay White if you've never seen him. Switch he blade. looks like Ted Cruz's son. He does. They're, 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 yeah, <laughs> spot on. Yeah. But the switchblade gimmick he's running is very interesting, and him and Tanahashi ought to be fun. Yeah, guys, I'm gonna I'm gonna put on I'm gonna put on Twitter, Facebook, and the group all that shit. I'm gonna put these uh fucking New Japan videos on there, so those of you that are uninitiated can see them. But yeah, um, sorry for rambling. Uh, Rance, do you have anything else to say? I know I kind of stepped on your toes. No, that's it, man. I just wanted to shout out all the. Shout out, don't forget to download us at Social Suplex Podcast Network. Find us on iTunes, find us on Podbean, which is the app that we use for the actual podcast to host it. Um, yep. Follow the pod, follow everybody. Yeah, appreciate it. Podcast Republic, um, we're not on Spotify. Um, podcast Addict, Stitcher, um, iTunes, like YouTube, you probably and said. YouTube, Nation Wrestling. Our shit's on YouTube, One Nation Wrestling. Um, we got a uh, Big Brother show, One Nation Radio, of course. Rich and James mm-hmm. there. We've got a Little Brother podcast. Uh, Brian, uh, pardon me, pardon me. Uh, Ricky and Clive, my bad. The Ricky and Clive Wrestling Show. Um, how did you describe that? Was that uh, Drew McIntyre talking to Noam Dar? It's, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's crazy. Yeah, it's, it's fucking crazy. great because yeah, I always under- do like my – <laughs> Anytime I hear a Scottish accent, and this may make me a xenophobe, I guess, but I always go, Dree! but yeah, that's, 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 that's what, what it sounds there. like the entire time. And you can make out like every third word, but it's good stuff. So yeah, absolutely, shout out to dude. I mean, we got our fucking 
you know, southern accents anyway, so I'm not going to fucking complain. Um, guys, you can follow me on Twitter at SMC underscore Cal B. Had to remember there for a second. Sorry, guys, it's late. Um, Social Suplex at Social Suplex. One Nation Radio at One Nation Radio. Ricky and Clive at Ricky and Clive. The SMC podcast. Um, that's really about it. Um, we're going to end this one with a uh, goodbye, good night. Thank you for listening, and God freaking bless you. Vince, leave in the pod. You scared me, Carl. <laughs>